Hi family, welcome into our broadcast of You Are Enough. I'm your host, Nikki, but before we dive into our video, I want to ask that all of you who are tuning in today, subscribe to our channel, like and share our videos, and jump over to our Instagram at Nikki G. McCray and give us your support over there. Thank all of you for supporting the book, Becoming a Master of Divine Consciousness, and our products here on YouTube and Instagram. Thank you for praying for us. Thank all of you so much for all of your acts of kindness through Cash Apps, through PayPal, we're so grateful for you. Today, I want to speak to you very briefly, family, about an idiom in life that we all will face when we reach our lowest point, and that's called hitting rock bottom. Whenever you hit rock bottom, I want you to perceive this different. I pray that all of you who are tuning in today, I want you to learn this because I had to learn some of these things too the hard way. Learn to see God in everything because God is speaking to us in, in ways that we wouldn't even imagine he would speak to us in ways. And sometimes in life, God would bring the greatest revival and restoration in our lives when we hit rock bottom. Because where else are you going to go? From bottom to the top. When you hit rock bottom, it's going to give you an opportunity to rebuild. I don't want you to look at if you've ever hit rock bottom, if you're in a place, you, you've gotten yourself in a dark hole where you're never going to come out. I want you to know God is going to meet you at the point of your need. If you are in the darkest night of the soul, if you feel like you're in hell and you're never going to get out, this is where God wants you because now God can really speak to you because maybe you've been in a position in your life where your life was so busy, your life was so chaotic. Maybe you were ego driven. Maybe you've been a little bit prideful. I think we all have and thank God for growth. This is an opportunity for God to do his greatest work in your life and when you go through life i want you to be kind of leery of this just pay attention don't be too suspicious of everybody but just be careful because people who have left your life they will return to your life when they hit rock bottom so be careful everybody that returns don't have ulterior motives they don't have bad intentions toward you but a lot of people do so be careful of the people who are coming back into your life while they're coming when they hit rock bottom because some people would never have anything else to do with you if they stayed on the top so if you've had somebody in your life that have walked away from your life they've left your life and now this person is trying to re-enter your life first you need to pray and ask god did he send that person and what reason now are they in re-entering your life because a lot of people but not everybody they will return and they will try to return to your life when they are in one of the worst places that they can ever be in because now they're in a position to hear now they're in a position to listen it's just like god he does us the same way every time the children of israel rebelled every time the children of israel disobeyed what god asked them not to do they found themselves back into bondage if you found yourself back in a bondage, possibly you've disobeyed somewhere. Maybe you're in error. Maybe you're in rebellion. But being at rock bottom is a good place. It don't feel good to the flesh, but it's a good place. Because this is the place now where you're open, where you weren't open in the beginning. Now God can start rebuilding your life. Now God can start restoring your life because you have nowhere else to go. So don't try to get out of the fire if you're in it because God is going to throw you right back in it. You know, we don't like to go through things that hurt. We don't, we don't like to go through tests. We don't like to go through the fire. But through the fire is where we're pur purified. Through the fire, through the hardships, the trial, the tribulation, through the storms, this is where God will build your integrity. This is where God is going to build your character. And this is where God is going to reveal to you who you really are. This is where you're going to find your source of strength. A lot of gifts, talents, abilities that you have on the inside of you, maybe you didn't know what they were. And when God gets you in this place, you're going to discover them. Rock bottom is a place for you to be redefined. It's going to be a place for God to rebuild you. It's going to be a place in your life where you're going to be literally restored because now you are open to growth. Now you're ready to grow because you're tired of losing. See, in life, 
you know how sometimes when you go through life and you say you're tired of something, but you still keep doing the same thing? It's like an oxymoron. You want a different result, but you keep doing the same thing over, over, and over, and over, and over, and over again, but you expect a different result. You can't. If you want a different result, you got to do something different. If you want something you've never had before in life, you have to do what you've never done before. So if you don't hear God one way, trust me, been there, done that, you're going to hear him in a way that you don't want. So this is why God would allow us to hit rock bottom. This is why God would put us in a position where we can't go anywhere, where we can't do anything, where our hands are tied. Because he has something that he wants to tell you. He has some things that he wants to reveal to you. And God loves you so much that he wants to bring restoration in our lives. So just understand that if you've hit rock bottom, you're in one of the greatest positions you can ever be in your life when you hit rock bottom. Because God is going to take all of these things, all of these things you've gone through with, all the, the negative things you've ever endured, and God is going to get the glory out of that. This is why we walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. What makes you feel bad is the flesh. It's not your spirit because the spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak. So you got to crucify your flesh every day. That means to kill it. That means whatever your flesh wants, you can't feed it. You have to kill it because your spirit, you live in a body and you house a soul. And your soulless realm makes up your mind, your will, your emotions, your intellect, and your imaginations. These are mental faculties. And if one of these mental faculties are lost then this is where our world gets turned upside down go get the copy of your of the book becoming a master divine consciousness i give you some kingdom principles and some points to assist you on your journey to healing i believe by faith that this is book this book is going to be a great tool for you be weary be careful when people leave your life and they try to re-enter because some people will try to re-enter your life just because they've hit a hard place and some people will return because God has assigned these people to return because now they're in a position to grow. Now they're in a position to listen. But remember this, Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon that is formed against God's children will prosper. But he never promised you and I that the weapon wouldn't form. He didn't promise us that. He said the weapon would form, but it wouldn't prosper. Whatever error is shooting in your direction god said it will never fall in your dwelling place you'll feel the effects of the storm you'll feel the effects of the trial you will you'll feel the effects of the tribulation but god said it won't hit you it won't destroy you it won't kill you whatever you're facing right now is coming to make you strong don't feel like it does it but just hang in there with god keep your hand in god's hand and understand this that anything outside of you, that's not how you're going to find who you are. You identify in Christ who you are, not externally. You got to go within. And if God has you in a season of isolation, you honor that season of isolation because God is going to build your integrity. He's going to build your character. This is where we get built to be soldiers, to be ambassadors for the kingdom of God. I love each and every one of you. I pray that you have a great day. I pray that you let nothing come in and hinder what God has for you. If a person is coming in your life to hinder, hinder your life, God didn't send that person. God is going to send you people in your life that you can network with, where you can grow, where you can elevate, where you can soar. But remember when you're blessed, family, people will persecute you. He said, blessed are those who are persecuted. That's when you're blessed, not when you get the house, not when you get the car, not when you get the money. That's not, that doesn't mean we're blessed. That's the result of God blessing you. He will give you things that mean you're blessed. Blessed means God will empower you to prosper. He said, I bless whatever you touch. He said, wherever your feet go. He said, I will give you that place. I declare a great day to all of you. Thank you for tuning in today. Bye-bye.